we often hear about new energy breakthroughs, from fusion reactors to concentrated solar power. But most of these all circle back to the same invention we've been using since 1884, the steam turbine generator. No matter how revolutionary the technology, the process often involves generating heat and using it to create steam, which then is used to spin a turbine. This turbine then spins an electrical generator, and Bob's your uncle, you've got electricity that you can match and export to the grid. But the breakthrough in today's video replaces this steam turbine for something far more efficient, meaning it could change the electricity generation phase of nearly everything used in modern power plants. This invention is the supercritical carbon dioxide turbine, and recent developments are really starting to heat up. Let's see how it works and what it means for the future of our energy. I'm Ryan Innes, and this is a Xerox Deep Dive. Carbon dioxide, or CO2, is generally seen as a bad thing in modern energy systems. But when put into its supercritical state, it could actually be part of the solution. I respect your time, so we'll get straight into how it works. And if you want to jump through, you can look at the labeled timeline below for current projects, performance data, and future outlooks. The first thing to understand about supercritical CO2 turbines is, of course, supercritical CO2 itself. Think of supercritical CO2 as an in-between state of matter. It causes CO2 to flow like a gas, but with the density of a liquid. I forgot to add this into the script, but I've just looked it up and it's roughly half the density of water. So it's like a gas with extremely high densities. So before getting into the science of it all, I wanted to see a demonstration. Thankfully, there is an incredible one by Dr. James Orgill from the Action Lab YouTube channel. Using a pressure chamber with two thick acrylic windows, a block of dry ice, which is solid CO2, turns into liquid CO2. It goes into a liquid here because of the high pressures, which push the molecules together, stopping them from turning into a gas. With a piece of styrofoam floating around, you can see the interface layer, which shows the boundary between the liquid and the gas in the pressure vessel. As the vessel heats up, the liquid CO2 starts to transition into a supercritical fluid, and the interface layer disappears. The piece of styrofoam is now seemingly suspended in the supercritical CO2, which has expanded to take up the full volume of the pressure vessel. It is this supercritical CO2 that can be used to spin turbines in our next generation of power plants. Regardless of whether the heat source is fusion energy, solar power, or even natural gas. I found this graph which helps show the science of what's happening here. The bottom x-axis shows temperature, and the y-axis on the side shows pressure. In the video we saw, the very cold CO2 started as a solid in the pressure chamber. As the temperature increased, it then transitioned into a liquid. With the temperature continuing to rise, it crossed the critical threshold and became supercritical CO2. The critical point on the graph is the minimum temperature and pressure required to get CO2 into its supercritical state. It happens at temperatures above 31 degrees Celsius or 88 degrees Fahrenheit and pressures above 74 atmospheres or 170 psi. So that is how supercritical CO2 works, but I wanted to know how it's being used inside turbines. Once we have our supercritical CO2, it must be used to spin a turbine to make the electricity. Similar to a steam turbine, the process starts with compression and then a heat source heating up the supercritical CO2, which causes it to expand. This expansion forces it through the pipes into the turbine's blades, which forces them to spin around. The turbine's motion can then be used to spin an electrical generator. However, there are some key differences. The turbines are much smaller and with much thicker blades. This is because the supercritical CO2 is more dense than steam so the blades have to be stronger to take the forces, but it also means that these higher densities allow the turbine to generate a lot more power for its size. This means a supercritical CO2 turbine can be around 10 times smaller than a competing steam turbine. Steam turbines can also have issues with wear and tear, 
due to the presence of water droplets within them, with the water droplets hitting into high-speed blades and causing erosion. However, because the CO2 stays in its supercritical state, it reduces these challenges and helps improve the turbine's lifespan. One of the key benefits for supercritical CO2 turbines though is how they improve efficiency, which as many of you will know is one of my favourite things. The efficiency gains come from three main places, which we'll cover after a quick message from today's sponsor, Udu, who are helping to improve the efficiency of businesses around the world. I know the pain of starting a consultancy or business or project and having to deal with a million different software packages from many different places when all you really want to do is just start getting things done. Thankfully, Udu is an all-in-one business management platform that takes out the headache and brings everything into one place. From website building and invoicing, to e-commerce and inventory management, and everything in between. Say I want to expand Xeroth into offering some additional services. It allows me to quickly build a website in minutes by describing what I want, choosing a color palette, selecting which pages and features I need, and finally picking the best theme. You can then customize the site using an intuitive interface that lets you design it by simply dragging and dropping blocks, then rearranging them using the grid system. I couldn't believe how easy it was for me to mock up and make this website. Udu provides apps tailored to all industries, whether you're a small or large business or have a project or ongoing activity. Now I've finished my studies, I have a lot of ideas and projects I want to pursue, so Udu will be the first place I go to. Try it now as the first app is free for life using my link in the description or by scanning the on-screen QR code. Now back to what is driving the improved efficiencies of these innovative turbines. The second reason for its high efficiency is that it can operate at higher temperatures, which means the supercritical CO2 has further to drop between the inlet and outlet of the turbine. Having this high initial temperature and therefore large temperature drop is important for efficiency because it means the turbine has extracted more energy and converted it into useful electricity. Here I find it useful to remember that the hotter something is, the easier it is to cool down. And finally, the supercritical CO2 always stays in its supercritical state, which is important because there is a lot of energy wasted when you convert from one phase to another, like a liquid to a gas or gas to a liquid, which is where you lose a lot of energy in the steam turbine process. Because the supercritical CO2 never experiences this energy wasting phase change, the efficiency is maximized. These things together, along with some added bonuses, boost the efficiencies to up to 50%, up from around 40% in modern steam turbines. When looking at the real world applications of supercritical CO2, however, it's worth remembering it's not all sunshine and rainbows. It does have some challenges, which is why we're not seeing these everywhere just yet. One of the biggest hurdles is material durability. Supercritical CO2 cycles operate at extreme temperatures and high pressures, requiring advanced alloys and coatings to withstand long-term exposure without degradation. In fact, these high temperatures can cause more of a challenge than the water droplets that are present in the steam turbines. The seals and bearings also face challenges because conventional designs struggle to manage the high density, high speed flow of supercritical carbon dioxide. Additionally, the lack of standardization and large scale deployment further slows adoption as industries remain cautious about investing in unproven technology. But here at Xeroth, we're not ones to dwell on limitations. We like to remain optimistic. So with that being said, let's have a look at the real world systems using supercritical CO2. There are a number of exciting projects, such as the one from Sandia National Laboratories. For the first time, researchers there delivered electricity produced by a supercritical CO2 system to the Sandia Kirtland Air Force Base electrical grid. However, I want to focus on the supercritical transformational electric power, or STEP, demo pilot plant in Texas, as there is a little more information available. This $155 million, 10 megawatt facility is a collaborative effort between General Electric, Southwest Research Institute, GTI Energy, and the US Department of Energy. In 2023, the STEP demo achieved mechanical completion, 
marking a significant milestone towards demonstrating the commercial viability of supercritical CO2 technology. By May 2024, the plant successfully generated electricity for the first time, with the turbine reaching its full speed of 27,000 RPM at an operating temperature of 500 degrees Celsius and 250 bar, producing 4 megawatts of grid synchronized power. The project is now preparing for its next phase, expected to begin this year in 2025, where the system will be reconfigured and the turbine inlet temperature will be increased to 715 degrees Celsius, significantly boosting efficiency. Upon full commissioning, the step demo is expected to generate 10 megawatts of power, with the broader goal of optimizing the power systems for future applications in waste heat recovery, solar thermal, nuclear fission and fusion, and carbon capture integrated fossil fuel plants. What's mind-blowing is that this turbine is so compact that it could fit on a kitchen worktop, making it roughly 10 times smaller than a competing steam turbine. It's this reduction in size that will hopefully continue to drive down costs. This system is aiming for 50% efficiency, up from around 40% of conventional steam, and is paving the way for the future of our power system. I believe CO2 turbines are poised to revolutionize our electricity generation, offering higher efficiencies, smaller footprints, and lower environmental impacts compared to traditional steam turbines. As research advances, the technology is gaining traction in next generation power plants, including nuclear, concentrated solar power, and waste heat recovery systems. World-class research labs are leading the efforts to commercialize supercritical CO2 turbines, with pilot projects like the STEP demo proving their viability. However, challenges with high temperature materials, system durability, and cost reductions must be addressed before widespread deployment. With continued investment and technological breakthroughs, supercritical CO2 turbines could soon become a key player in the global transition towards cleaner, more efficient power. As you're still watching, please consider subscribing. It's free and helps the channel a lot. You may also like some of my other videos like this one on a revolutionary new electric motor. And don't forget to check out today's sponsor, Udu. As always, thanks for watching.